Hi there, Deb Hoekstra with Bee Bug Creations, and I have another card making 101 video for you. Today I'm going to share um, how to use an aqua painter, and this is what the aqua painters look like. Stampin' Up! sells aqua painters. They come in packages of two. Um, one has, I'm going to take these lids off, they, they come with lids to protect the brushes. Um, there are two, actually two different types of brushes that um, that are in the package. One is a wider brush like this um, and that is great. It's a, it's a little bit longer too. You can see here the difference in the brushes. It's longer and wider and you use it for backgrounds and broader applications of color for your project. And then the other tip you can see here has a very very um, a fine tip to it and that is great for um, applying color to specific areas and when you want to do the little details. So the aqua painters have a barrel and the tip just screws off like this and you run, put this under the faucet, fill it with water and then um, put your paintbrush tip back on and you're ready to go. And um, having water in the barrel like this makes it easy to control the amount of water that you use in your water coloring. So a couple things to remember before we get started. Um, watercolor is you're using water to spread the ink. So you're going to want a paper towel nearby to clean off your, your brush. You'll just kind of clean it off like that. Or you'll want some paper towel in case you get a lot of water on your project and you want to blot off the excess water. Uh, you also need to use waterproof ink and stays on ink is perfect for that job. If you use water-based ink with your water coloring when you put the water on the black ink will run if it's water-based but because this is a solvent ink when you apply the water it will not run. So always remember when you're using water coloring that you need to have a non-water-based ink for your stamped image. And then I'm going to show you today how to use um, your ink pad for a palette, the lid of your ink pad for, for a palette. So um, that's, that's what you need. You need some sort of palette, and today we're going to be using the ink pad. So without further ado, we're going to get started. I'm going to be doing two different um, watercolor techniques. The first one, I'm going to be using this stamp from the Wetlands stamp set, and I'm going to be creating a background for the stamped image and just to save time I've already stamped my image. So that's the first thing I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to be um, stamping this poppy image, or I already did stamp this poppy image onto a piece of um, watercolor paper and um, I'll be coloring that for you too. And another thing to remember that is that um, watercolor paper is your best medium for um, watercoloring. It's going to do two things. Number one, it's going to allow the ink to flow um, better on the paper. It's designed for that. And number two, if you use like Whisper White cardstock, that's going to peel on you. The watercolor paper will not. So to get started, you kind of want to squeeze the barrel of the, pan, uh, the aqua painter just a little bit. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Oops, got too much water. You don't want to squeeze it too hard but you want to squeeze it just enough to get the water started flowing on the brush. I don't know if, yep, there you go. Now it's flow. Oh, and this one seems to be dripping. So what, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my um, image here with water, just wet water, and I want to get the paper really, really wet. And the reason that I do that, and not everybody will tell you to do this, but the reason that I like to do that is it kind of seasons the paper and it gets it ready to accept the ink. Um, this is what works for me. So, um, and I notice here I'm using the wider brush because I'm going to fill in a background here. So these birds are on the shore, and so I'm going to do some brown on the bottom for the sand and then some blue for the sky. So to get my palette ready, I'm going to press with my thumb and fingers, and then that's going to get some ink in the top of the lid like so. And then I'm just going to simply take my brush and get some water in it. Now this is the brown, so I want to do the sand with that. And I'm just going to, this is called watercolor wash. And all I want to do, and the reason that 
this is going on so smoothly is because I got my paper wet to start with, okay? And I'm just going to kind of wash that out, okay? And then I'm going to let that sit to the side to dry. Um, if I would go back and do the blue right away, if with this not being dry, then the, the brown and the blue would kind of absorb together, and I'm not sure I would like that effect. So I'm going to set this one to the side to dry while I color my poppies, and then I'll come back and add the sky to it, all right? Okay, our second image that we're going to be doing is the poppies image. And so I've got my image already stamped, and I've got my aqua painter. And again, I like, my habit is to kind of go over the whole image and get it wet. And this just, I think it just makes it a little bit more, um, makes it accept the ink a little bit more. And then the next thing I like to do when I'm painting an image is to give it a light color wash. And I go over the whole thing, especially like this one I'm coloring, you know, I'm going to be coloring the poppies. And I'm going to do them all red. So you see here, I'm just going, I'm not worrying about shading or anything else. And I'm also not necessarily worrying about getting all the way out to the edge of the, um, the flowers. Um, so I'm just going to kind of do a little color wash here. And um, let's see what else was I going to tell you. Um, watercoloring is not a precise medium. So you notice here I'm not really worrying about whether I stay in the lines or out. Um, part of the beauty of the watercoloring is how it, how it goes out of the lines. It adds a very nice um, look to it. Okay, so I've done my light color wash. Some areas are darker, some areas are lighter. That's okay. Now I'm going to go back and I want to work on the shading a little bit. Um, if you were using more than one color on your watercoloring, you'd want to use go from the lightest color to the darkest color. In this case, I'm doing just one color, so it doesn't matter. Um, you, watercoloring takes some time, so you want to... Um, don't don't rush the process, but you see here now I'm going back and I'm adding color kind of right around where I think the darkest areas should be. Um, one of the things too that Stamping Up does on a lot of their stamped images is they give you ideas of where the shading might be. So if you follow their suggestions for the shading quite often you come out with very um, nice results because they've kind of given you suggestions as to where the shading should be. So you see here, you can see I'm kind of going along the lines. Um, some of it's getting a little darker. I'm not worrying about being precise at all. Um, if, if it's a little dark, like these are just a little darker to my liking, so I can go back and I can add water. And the, actually by adding the water, the water actually spreads out that color and makes it a little lighter, or, yeah, lighter. It seems counterintuitive to add more water to make it lighter, but that, it kind of thins down the, um, kind of thins down the, the ink and makes it appear a little bit lighter. So on this one, I'm, I'm going around the centers of my flowers, and you see how I'm just, I'm not really spending a lot of time on thinking about how to do it, um, if you're a perfectionist, this might be a challenge for you. This it did. I tend to be a perfectionist, and it did take me a little while to learn how to watercolor because of that. So, um, so there we go. I I done the the, the lighter color. And you see here, I'm just um, I'm not spending a lot of time um, figuring out what I'm doing. And you can already see how there are some areas that are lighter and some areas that are darker. And like if this is too dark, I can go back and I can just apply a little bit of water and I can spread it out a little bit if I, th if I think it needs a little bit more color. So watercoloring is, you know, just kind of a very forgiving medium. You can 
go back and add more color after it dries. Um, I'm going to do the green stems now, so in order to change the color, I want to wipe off my, my brush until I don't have any more red showing. And then I'm going to use the new Mossy Meadow color for the stems. And for this, I'm just going to take my brush and I'm just going to go right down the stem, just like so. And I'm not worrying about getting it all filled in. Again, remember you want to use watercolor paper for this, um, this technique. Um, as you can see, it uses water and, and um, water and the Whisper White cardstock don't always go very well together. Sometimes it'll pill. So you can see there what I'm doing. I've got a few stems left. I'll finish those out. Just like this. I'm just kind of finishing it out. Almost done there. One, two, and there we go. Oh, there's one I missed right in the middle here. So, and you see again, I'm not worrying about going in the lines. Part of the beauty of watercoloring is how you go out. So there is my finished image. Now, if I... Um, wanted to go back after it was dry and add a little bit more dark in some of these areas here where I think there might be need to be a little bit more dark I can certainly go back and do that after the fact so like this one here I might need think there needs to be a little bit more dark like that so there you go that is how you watercolor that way now let's go back to my birds and they are fairly dry. I guess I got them a little wet. But I'm going to use Coastal Cabana for the sky. So here we go. I'm going to get my pen ready. And then I'm just going to do, remember, we're doing a color wash. So um, you're just going to put the blue back and forth and some areas might get a little darker, some areas might get a little lighter, but that's how you get a color wash, just like that. And as I said, I'll put that to the side and let it dry, and it will be a beautiful piece to use on a card, and maybe I'll share that card on my blog when I get that card created. So there you go. That is it. Um, oh, sometimes, like on this card, you're getting too much water, and it's, that's called pooling. So you can take a paper towel and just kind of blot the excess water off. Don't necessarily want it to be pooling. So that, that's another technique that you can um, use if you get too much water on there. So there we go. That's it. Water coloring is as easy as that. I hope you enjoyed this Card Making 101 video, and um, we'll see you again next time. Thank you.